Welcome to this video. Amerindians ancestors of all humans. No evidence for the consensus hypotheses. Miners unearthed the first Neanderthal fossil in a cave in Germany in 1856, that was almost 200 years ago, and three years before the publication of On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. Probably the finding of the fossils made it easier for Darwin and others to hypothesize and consent that modern humans somehow evolved from apes all the way to modern humans and this over the Neanderthals, intermediate species. Further the Neanderthals were hypothesized not to have been as fit as we modern humans supposed and still suppose we were, and the fact that Neanderthal went extinct was considered support of this, new, hypotheses and consensus. Consensus and scientists probably did not imagine that one of the most important proofs against consensus hypotheses in relation with Neanderthals, out of Africa and out of Beringia would come forth from the found and at the time very welcome Neanderthal fossils. Much later, roughly after the year 2000, many Neanderthal fossils and other fossils would have their ancient DNA analyzed and what was found was so disruptive for consensus hypotheses that the key info never made it to the general public in a for the general public readable form. No proof of consensus. Despite of one, the recent analysis of modern and more recently also ancient DNA and its many mutations, two, enormous efforts and numerous studies and publications, no evidence for Neanderthal being our origin, out of Africa and out of Beringia could be found. Instead the number of paradigms, doubts, were increasing, rather exponentially. Nor consensus, nor scientists are able, or willing, to make the general public aware of the failure to prove any of the by consensus supported hypotheses nor of the potential impact that the findings could have in relation to threats and human existence. Association DNA, origin and recent instability, threats and perfect storm? Is there an association and positive feedback between DNA, origin, degeneration and instability, threats and perfect storm, extinction? This dominating consensus without proof and neglect ion of paradigms and scientific fundamentals affected and still affects consensus and scientists in general and seems to have turned into a dangerous situation, possible eminent extinction, because... 1. Human DNA has been degenerating at a rather exponential rate since 1995, and this seems to affect our cognitive function. Our cognitive function is considered the main characteristic of being human, and the degeneration of human DNA negatively affects our cognitive function above all. 2. There is a strong correlation between cognitive function disorders, comorbidities, and recent epidemics. 3. There is a strong correlation between cognitive function disorders and the frequency and severity of recent epidemics. 4. The obvious DNA instability and the subsequent rise of cognitive function disorders, comorbidities, is unprecedented in human history. Presented are several figures where dementia and Alzheimer are presented as incoming diseases, just as diabetes which is one of the causes of dementia and Alzheimer's, this obviously causes a vicarious circle and a difficult to break positive feedback. The sharp rise of autism is not mentioned as it is dominantly amongst the younger and the abnormal and premature deaths it cause are registered under other groups that keeps the deaths out of the figures we look at to see what affects mortality and life expectancy. Alzheimer's is significantly increasing, also percent wise. AMR is recognized and touted to increase vulnerability for women which obviously should be directly associated with human existence and more importantly indirectly with roughly everything related to collapses and extinction. AMR is yet another element of the perfect storm that is unedited in human history. And at least for now it is proven unreachable and unbreakable, this including for health organizations and industry. In the past and until now breaking it depended on isolation of countries of the order of a continent. For military and health organizations, the risk is obvious that from now on parties that will want to break the perfect storm and threats will have no other option left than to resort to nuclear, burned earth strategies, which could affect any part of the world but even their own countries. Whatever party that will attempt to break in the past depended on isolation of countries of the order of a continent. With AMR in the equation under the actual perfect storm, 
from now on isolation even of continents will not be effective anymore, so only the latter way, please look above, of breaking the obvious vicious circle will be available for the named parties. Please note that in the case of your Yersinia pestis certain first-line antibiotics are not and will not be in reach in time on the free market and there are no stockpiles of it in the free market and such stockpiles will not be allowed by the above-mentioned parties, the mentioned products are declared to have serious side effect, but if they really have they already had so when they were effectively used in the first lines in the past. CDC was associating coronavirus and AMR to a perfect storm that is clearly a threat against our existence. Plague is a re-emerging disease. Further plague is for the military and health organizations a clear and unbreakable threat. We cannot afford to negate multiple threats. We cannot afford to not recognize our main threats and not to find their causes or the mostly positively associated causes, positive feedback, of the perfect storm that are so complex we cannot even isolate them or give them a weight. We cannot afford to negate that there is an increasing number of epidemics and that just because of this it must be associated with causes or with a perfect storm. Obviously, these are not one every so many years events. Health organizations rather clearly confirm this by insisting on calling it a perfect storm that involves a combination of many causes adding up, or insisting the question is not if a new epidemic will appear, but when, and how many of them at the same or overlapping period. We cannot afford to leave certain parties without humanly acceptable options, especially since such a situation is still preventable if also the general public opens its eyes in time. If nothing is done, only protection, at for instance family level becomes realistic by for instance living in less vulnerable regions or being able to travel to them at all times. This is the end of this video, thanks for watching. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Hope to see you in our next video. Bye.